The American troops that burned the Ryersey farm had landed the day before below Dover Mills. Their unauthorized expedition of some 750 soldiers is headed by Lieutenant Colonel John Campbell. Dover's leaders are old revolutionary Tories who had been very active, not only in oppressing our friends in Canada, but by aiding all in their powers the burning and plundering of Buffalo. I am determined to make them feel the effects of that conduct which they had pursued towards others. Campbell's guides include Abraham Markle of the Canadian Volunteers. The former member of the Legislative Assembly of Upper Canada had been kicked out of the legislature by a prominent Norfolk resident, Colonel Robert Nicholl. It's possible Dover was specifically targeted because that was Robert Nicholl's residence. He was quartermaster general of militia for the War of 1812, so he, his responsibility was to supply the troops with, with food, quarters, other necessities. And he was a large thorn in the side of a, the Americans for a number of reasons. Fortunately, Nickel was a very shrewd character, and in the fall of 1813, he had sent his young wife, who was maybe 20 at the time, to relatives in Montreal for safety because he didn't want her anywhere near Dover should there be an attack, and he knew the place was vulnerable. And one of the places that was destroyed was the house of Robert Nickel. They got people leave the houses and gave him a pretty good idea of what was going to happen. And it must have been a pretty scary moment for the townspeople when you had seven or 800 armed guys from across the lake uh, here with no good on their minds. And there'd been some pretty nasty things back and forth on both sides. So I don't think they had any reason to expect any quarter would be given. An American private, Alexander McMullen, describes the destruction. A scene of destruction and plunder now ensued, which beggars all description. A party of sailors appointed to man the artillery, killed the hogs in the streets, and severed them in the middle, carrying off the hind parts while their head and shoulders were left in the street. In a short time, the houses, mills, and barns were all consumed, and a beautiful village, which the sun shone on in splendor that morning, was before two o'clock a heap of smoke and ruins. 